الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on his last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. It is my pleasure to have had the opportunity to share with you in your journey towards establishing a true Muslim community there in the seashells. Because education is a component of the community, a vital component of the community. It is the right of each and every child who grows up there in the community to receive Islamized education. Islamic education, as we know it, is Islamic studies, Arabic, Quran, but Islamized education means education which covers all the various aspects of life that are needed for the community to successfully exist and develop and to grow. That education should be delivered in an Islamic container. It should be conveyed in an Islamic way. Its material should conform with Islamic rules, principles, guidelines, etc. Because when we speak about education, the definition, and there are many definitions, the definition which most addresses the reality of education is the one which states that education is the way by which a society or a civilization conveys its values to the next generation. That's what education is about. It's not just information to help people earn a living, etc. It goes beyond that. And the furor that is going on in the West, the confusion right now, especially in America, the heart of the West, the struggle between those they refer to as the alphabet people, LGBTQ, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These who have this agenda and the conservative uh, wing of the society, which rejects what is being imparted, this is something which is affecting even the elections themselves. So we know that this has to do with the cultural foundation of the society. As Muslims, we have always recognized it. Education was inseparable from moral principles, guidelines, etc. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, himself had informed his followers, in I was only sent to perfect for you the highest of moral character traits. So with this 
guideline, we understand as Muslims that all aspects of uh, information and knowledge, etc., should be linked with morality. Morality with regards to the creator, and that is to worship him alone. Morality with regards to our fellow human beings, that is to protect their rights, and they protect your rights. And morality with regards to the world in which we live, the environment, it is our responsibility to look after it. As Allah gave us its beauty and its benefit, we have the responsibility to protect that beauty and benefit for the generations to come. So given the context where as a minority in the Seychelles, you brothers and sisters are striving to provide Islamic educational input into the education of your children. And it is, as I said, the right of each and every child growing up under your care to receive an Islamized education. As the Prophet Sallallahu had said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. Each and every one of you is like a shepherd responsible for his or her flock. So with that responsibility, you as Muslims in the Seychelles don't have a Muslim university or a Muslim high school or a Muslim primary school or even Muslim nurseries. You have no institutions beyond the weekend school, which in a sense is something of a bipolar or bipolarization of knowledge. We have Islamic school weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Islamic messages are being given and then the rest of the week monday through friday it's regular school secular school so the child is being raised with two minds one mind which is islamic so when you're with Islamic uh, groups or locations or etc., then you need to be Islamic. And when you are with secular, non-religious locations or in or engaging with, then don't bring Islam into that. Islam has one place, as the Christians claim Jesus was supposed to have said, leave on to Caesar, he represents the secular world, leave on to Caesar what is Caesar's, and on to God what is God's. That's the split. For us as Muslims, this has never been. For us, everything belongs to God. There is nothing which belongs to Caesar that we give that we don't need to give to God. Everything falls on to giving to God, meaning doing 
what is in accordance with the will of God. So we need to reintegrate. Of course, we can't do it overnight. As they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. So we have to start somewhere. So here we are with the weekend school. And this is a temporary step to what should be beyond. The weekend school is, is only a beginning. I don't know how long your weekend school has been running for, but it's long enough. It's time to move on. And we will look at that. But let us come back to the issue of the Muslim teachers. As Muslim teachers, we are supposed to be distinctly different from teachers who happen to be Muslims. What do I mean by that? A Muslim teacher is not a teacher who happens to be a Muslim, is a Muslim who happens to be a teacher. A Muslim teacher, true Muslim teacher, is a Muslim who happens to be a teacher. He could have been or she could have been engineer, doctor, carpenter, a number of other things. They are Muslims first. Whereas the fake Muslim teacher is a teacher who happens to be a Muslim. They could have been a Christian, a Buddhist, or anything else. They're a teacher first, first and foremost. So we have to be clear of this distinction. And we have to understand why do we need to make this distinction? Because teaching as a profession is actually a form of ibadah, a form of worship. And just as worship has conditions for its validity, like wudu and a time for its validity, because if you make wudu after making salah, then that wudu was of no use. Yes, you made wudu, but it was not when it was supposed to be. Likewise, we should be facing the Qibla. We have to stand in Qiyam if we're able, make Rukur if we're able, Sujood if we're able, all of these. We have conditions for the validity of the prayer. Likewise, as a teacher, there are conditions for us to do the teaching worship in a way which is valid and acceptable by Allah and rewardable by Allah. First and foremost, we have to have the correct knowledge. Knowledge which is necessary to convey whatever subject we are trying to convey in our weekend school. Yes, we may utilize books which are produced, published, etc. And in these books, 
uh, lessons are already worked out for us to a large degree, etc. So we just have to teach the lessons. But as a proper teacher, we should have in-depth understanding, not just reading what's in the book, half understanding it, not really being able to explain it to the children. We're just going through the motions because we have this assignment to do. We need to teach from lesson so-and-so to lesson so-and-so or page this to page that. No, we have to teach this subject. We should try to gain as much knowledge as we can on the subject to prepare ourselves as best as we can. Because for us to do it in the best way, we must have the requisite knowledge in which will enable us to do it in the best way. And the Prophet Sallallahu had told us very clearly, in Allah yuhibbu min ahadikum idha amila amalan and yutqina. Allah loves from each and every one of you that whenever you do anything, you do it to the best of your ability. al itqan Perfection. Of course, it's human perfection. Perfecting what knowledge you have gained. True perfect perfection, obviously, belongs only to Allah. But this is what we should strive for. We should have full knowledge of our subject matter that we are supposed to convey to the children. And of course, what is important in terms of the qualities that the teacher should have is firm faith. Because if we don't have firm faith in what we're teaching, then we will not be able to teach it properly to the children. We will focus on the rituals, the rites and the rituals. They will memorize them, five pillars of Islam, five pillars or six pillars of Iman. This approach where it's just a memorization of names and numbers and where the real essence of what is to be learned is not actually taught, then we haven't fulfilled our job as a Muslim teacher. We should have sincerity in what we, what we are delivering, because that faith and sincerity, it will be reflected in how we teach. As they say, teaching from the heart reaches the heart. What's coming from your heart, truly, sincerely, based on your faith, will reach the hearts of the children that you're teaching. But if it's not coming from there, it's just coming from your lips, your tongue, then it will just go in one ear and come out the other ear. I remember my um, son told me when I was in Riyadh and he was studying in school there, Muslim school, Manar to Riyadh in the Arabic section. And he was mentioning that, you know, that many of the boys, when the time for prayer comes, they run in and pray because the teachers are chasing them with sticks or whatever. They run in and pray. But I know they don't have, uh, have wudu. They, I saw them go to the bathroom and they're going and praying and they didn't make wudu. So many of the kids were doing this because for them, it's just a ritual. You just get in and do the ritual and it's done. 
but they didn't understand. Truly, they were not made to understand the importance of wudu. So, very important for us to recognize that sincerity is the essence, al-ikhlas is the essence of what we are supposed to be about as teachers. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praised that lofty status of being a teacher. He himself said, In Allah, Lam Yabafni Muannitan, Wala Mutaannitan, yes, Lakin Baathani Muallima. Allah didn't send me in as a harsh, uh, rough, gruff instructor. Instead, he sent me as a teacher, one who would teach with the necessary qualities that makes one a true teacher. And he also stated concerning the significance of being a teacher that the whole world is cursed. dunya mal'una. And everything in it is cursed. Except for the remembrance of Allah. And whatever helps us to attain that remembrance. And the scholar, teacher, and the student. So Allah gave special a special position for teachers in the society in the community etc so we need to prepare ourselves as teachers properly get the necessary knowledge to be able to deliver our topics, the information that we are assigned to teach. We should also have, along with it, a sense of mission. This is what I was speaking about, really. A sense of mission. You know, that we are on a mission. We are on an assignment from Allah SWT. Allah has put us in this position to earn Jannah through it. And among the qualities that we should have is that of mercy. As the Prophet ﷺ had said, one who doesn't respect our elders yeah. nor show mercy to our young ones is not of us. One who is doesn't show mercy, will not receive mercy from Allah. So we, in dealing with the children, should be particularly merciful. And the students learn from us, from our examples, more so than from our words. So it's very important for us to be just, and how we deal with the students. We as human beings may have a, a liking for one student because of the way they talk or the way they walk or the way they look or the way their parents or whatever. You may have a special liking, but, and maybe we can't, you know, escape it. We have preferences, but we cannot show it to the students. Because if we're going to try to teach them to be just, 
to be fair, to be loving, etc., to everybody, to others around them, then we ourselves have to be just in the emotions that we display in the classroom. So we should have no favoritism in the classroom. We should also have care and concern for each individual student. You know, sometimes I've been in classes where the teachers don't even know the names of all the students in the class. They don't. Whereas as a true teacher, you should know the name of every child in your class. Also, as we said, you have to be properly prepared. Not one hour before the class, you flip through the pages and no, you read it ahead. You understood it. Whatever was not clear, or you know the children would have difficulty understanding, you went and found out the details, etc., so you could explain it to them. So you are properly prepared. You know, as they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you should have a good plan, a lesson plan. Yes, you're not in regular government schools where they may require these lesson plans, etc. But on in the weekend school, you should plan your lessons ahead of time. It shouldn't be, well, I know I grew up, you know, as a Muslim in the community and I know wudu, I know, you know, fasting, I know all these things, these are natural to me. This is why I've lived that life. No, you have to teach it to children. And, you know, one of the things that caught me by surprise when I visited one of the teacher's colleges in Canada. I grew up in Canada and I'm originally from Jamaica. Was that they had this sign over the entrance of the, the college which said, make learning fun. Make learning fun. I taught in a school junior high school and high school sections of it for about 10 years in Riyadh, Muslim school. And what was found when surveys were done of the students in terms of what their preferences were, in terms of the various subjects they were taught, and they had non-Muslims teaching English, mathematics, science, etc. And there is the Muslim section of the school who taught Arabic, Quran. And I taught Islamic studies. Normally, this would have been taught by a non-English speaker also, or non-native English speaker. But in this school, I was teaching Islamic studies. When they did the survey amongst the students, they found that the subject most beloved to the students was English. Then came science. Then came mathematics. The ones which were the most despised by the students were Arabic, Quran, and for the levels, the, the, the primary level, Islamic studies. The students in the school, uh, they liked the way that the English side teachers taught. They had been trained in this concept of making learning fun. 
Whereas the teachers of Arabic, Quran, Islamic studies, they were coming from the traditional background in the third world countries. And, you know, teaching with the stick, for example, the Quran with the stick, and this has become a global tradition now amongst Muslims, which is something I try to speak out against wherever I go. It's become a norm. And uh, Quran teachers in many countries refuse to give it up. They say you can't teach the Quran without a stick. Tell us one country that is teaching Quran without a stick. This is what they would throw it back at me. And at the time when they threw it back, I didn't, I couldn't really recall any country that I had been to that weren't practicing this. But in fact, there are. You know, and I, I did visit others later and realized that okay, here, here, there are in different parts of the Muslim world in Malaysia and and in Maldives and other places. I found they they were conscious of this and were not using the stick as the means of teaching. But in the vast majority of the Muslim world, Quran teachers believe that you can't teach without a stick. Of course, people are now learning online, which is clear evidence that you can learn without the stick. That's clear enough evidence by itself. So these types of uh, behaviors, which in fact leave negative impressions in the minds of our children, you know, affecting a generation in such a way, I mean, it can go to extremes. In Canada, we had a few years ago, one uh, sister originally from Pakistan, where she beat her six-year-old child to death for not learning the portions of the Quran which were assigned to him by his teacher. She did it. In ignorance, she ended up in jail. It's madness. So, make learning fun. Now, this may be difficult to do if you don't have the training. So, what we need to do as teachers now would be to get the necessary training, early childhood education, you're dealing with small kids for the most part, early childhood education courses can be taken online uh, in the International Open University, university which I'm the chancellor of. Courses can be taken there, which would give you the necessary backgrounds to be able to develop proper teaching methods that would help you to convey your subjects without going into uh, forbidden areas. What we can do also in terms of the students that are, that are with you, is that in for students of grade seven to 12, that's the high school, junior high school, next year, inshallah, we will be launching a high school and junior high school online, which is from America, from the US, accredited by Cognia, the leading uh, accrediting body for educational institutions in the US and also from Cambridge in the UK. So inshallah, this will be available. We're preparing the necessary required arrangements for curriculum development, etc. 
and uh, finding the necessary teachers uh, to be able to start the recording process. We'll be starting it soon so that by next year, we'll be able to launch the high school. And why we're doing the high school and not the primary school is because the primary school and kindergarten, this requires supervision. You know, that uh, the schools I know which are online that are doing this, and there are some, some in Dubai, some in India, they require one of the parents to, to commit themselves in writing to be present during the uh, educational uh, process the whole time. They have to be present with the children. If they were not gonna be present, they were not accepting them in the school to study. Whereas seven to 12 students are already mature enough that they can study on their own. The other recommendation that I would give was that for your students, um, because I should mention that of course, all the subjects which will be taught in the seven to 12 will be taught from an Islamic perspective, utilizing the principles of lesson plan Islamization, working in the values and the principles necessary to convey the, the subjects from an Islamic perspective. And top of the list is morality. You know, one of the things that we stress is critical for Islamization of curriculum is that every class that the student has or takes should have a moral message in it. And this is something that you can do even at your uh, weekend school level. That, and this is, of course, has to be planned. You have to prepare yourself beforehand. You know, because if you're gonna wait until you're in class and then try to figure out something to teach them morally, then you're gonna manage to do it some days and many other days you're not able to. So you should plan out you know, a clear strategy for conveying moral values when the Prophet Sallallahu had said, in li al akhlaq, I was only sent to perfect for you the highest of moral, moral character traits. That this um, statement of the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that behind all of the messages of Islam, there are moral principles that should be learned and applied. So uh, in the course of developing our curriculum, all of the subjects that we offer, and we would say now for your, in the community there, the students who are graduating from grade 12, we would encourage you to have them enroll with the International Open University, where all the subjects, and we have subjects from Islamic studies and Arabic, of course, we do have as degree subjects, BAs, masters, and we're working on the PhDs. And in education, psychology, business administration, information technology, Islamic banking and finance, with the plan in the coming year to add public health, agricultural economics, and mass communications. So we have all these, we could call them modern subjects. Don't really want to call them secular subjects because it's taught in, in the International Open University. All of these are taught from an Islamic perspective. All of our professors are required to include the Islamic view on whatever is being taught in the university. So uh, this is a way in which the 
university can collaborate with the community to help to build the community and help it move forward. Because you ultimately do have to have your own schools. You know what is going on in, in the West now, as I mentioned earlier, LGBTQ is coming at all of the schools, right down to nursery. They're sticking these ideas in the minds of the children and there's a resistance struggle to, to hold it back. But Allah knows where this will end. The point and the fact of the matter is that we as Muslims have to have a clear agenda. We have a clear set of institutions that we control and you know we can ignore or leave these or not have our children exposed to these types of ideas, etc. Except from a corrective perspective, you know, clarifying to them, of course, what's wrong with it, because we don't want to just say no, 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 but why no? Because Allah said, the Prophet Muhammad said, common sense says, logic supports. So we give them a, a learned, positive, uh, intellectual response to these types of aberrations, which will appear, are now appearing and will continue to appear in the future which our young people are going to be faced with. So I would encourage those teachers who are teaching the Islamic sub subjects uh, to take some courses from the College of Education on, online, IOU. You can register for them and take individual courses to build up Though the area that you need, whether it's differentiated instruction or you know, various other topics which will help you uh, effectively deliver your course material that you're teaching this, the students in your weekend schools. So, as we said, the idea of making learning something appealing to the students is going to be the winner. You're going to win over the hearts of the children, the young people who you're teaching, where you have worked out, worked on developing strategies to make your various classes enjoyable. And this is something which is doable, is attainable, and we should set it at, as our sights. So I think I've covered a sufficient material. Now we've gone for, I guess, almost an, over an hour or an hour. Um, I'm happy to stop here and uh, hear the feedback from those who are present, uh, issues that they may face or feel, you know, need to be uh, addressed. And um, perhaps in the future, I can do a session for you on the Islamization you know, of lesson plans. Because if we're able to Islamize our lesson plans as teachers, then the, uh, and, the and this is for those who are actually professional teachers, you know, uh, if you learn how to Islamize the material that you're teaching, then as private tutors, etc., because I'm sure probably you're all doing some tutoring, 
you know, you will be able to, especially for Muslims, uh, be able to bring the Islamic view on the various subjects that you're teaching. So let me stop here and uh, turn the floor back over to you all. And uh, we can look at the questions uh, or hear the questions that you would like to raise or points that you'd like to discuss. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Bilal, Jazakallah, O'Kellan for this insight and excellent motivational talk this morning. And it's very encouraging to see that you have a lot to offer, especially through your open university. It only remains for us to grasp these challenges as a tool to make the difference here in Seychelles. Otherwise, if we don't take these opportunities up, I think we will be teaching blindly. Alhamdulillah, we've got some good sisters from the circular background and uh, with the offer that you've put that you can assist us with the Islamization of uh, lesson plans, we need to grasp these opportunities because you've tried, you've tested it, it works. We don't have to reinvent the wheel like they say in the West. You've already invented it. And uh, I will uh, pass on to Imam Abdurrahman and the team back uh, at the halt. And I feel we need to grasp this opportunity and have a plan and some targets for us to achieve within ourselves. Yeah. But Jazakallah uh, Karan for your time and Allah reward you abundantly for all your efforts. And uh, make dua Amen. for us. That, yeah, make dua for us that our small community we can impart this good Islamic knowledge, inshallah. Because this education is one of our priority for the next four or five years ahead of us, inshallah. Inshallah. Imam, over to you. Dr. Bilal, Jazakallah khairan. Like uh, Mr. Diaz has said, you really. Benefit us this morning. I believe all of us will say yes. And uh, upon that, I will open the floor for our team that we have here for any comments or any suggestion or any questions. So the floor is open for brothers and sisters. Okay. Um, my question is based on the Islamic Online University you are the Chancellor of. I was actually going through your website and I was checking out the courses you have available. And I was just asking if we here in Seychelles, we want to apply for any of these courses, if that is possible. Yes, it's possible. We have students from virtually all the countries in the world. Maybe so how do Seychelles we apply? Well, you, you, you go online. You know, you go to the website and um, you go to the registration, you complete registration, and then you go into enrollment and um, you can start. Um, you know, we have uh, thousands of students from Africa studying with us, as well as from Asia, um, alhamdulillah. So it's, it's, it's quite simple as long as you have uh, decent internet then it's uh, quite easy. Uh, what you can do for, if you run into any difficulties, there's a help desk. You can always contact the help desk. They can help you know, walk you through. And if you still have difficulty beyond that, then uh, you can, uh, I, I can arrange for somebody to, to help you. Um, uh, my personal assistant who is with, with us today, Sister Iman Al Sheikh, who is from Egypt, uh, she can um, get a, get somebody who will uh, walk you through the process if you run into difficulty or further difficulty that you can't find your way out. I will be honored, inshallah. She can contact me anytime. So her number will be with uh, with uh, Imam and. Um, uh, Brother Imtiaz, so inshallah they can convey it to those of you who need it. 
So actually, doctor, we have one of our ex-teachers that already left Seychelles. Uh, she came from uh, Pakistan, Sister Izin. You all know Sister Izin. She graduated from the from the university. And we have Brother Ahmad here, who is the exam officer that uh, observe exam in Seychelles. He is the liaison officer for um, your IOU. And Brother Ahmad has been oh. doing that more than 10 years or so. Yes. So we have the connection, alhamdulillah. We have some students that started the classes and some most of them left, I believe so. Only Sister Izin and his brother also went through that exam. So inshallah, we have that connection and we will continue. Maybe now we have to enforce it more and enroll our teachers in the courses. Yeah, and especially, you know, the, um, the those who are graduating. This is, this is, you have a set of students who are graduating each year, you know, from the community. You know, they should be encouraged to further their studies through, through IOU because uh, they will be getting what you weren't able to give them we will be giving them through the courses that they have to, to take in IOU while specializing in their various areas, you know, of technical spe specialities. And we also have, uh, yeah. also, we have a program which is called the One Mass Program, which is uh, one million scholarships for uh, for African students so you know i think seychelles is considered a part of africa you know or connected to africa so if you have people who are eligible for zakah they can't afford to to study in university they just don't have the finances because of course our fees are extremely low you know um very very low i'm way below any of the universities there in seychelles how many universities do you have there anyway only one. <laughs> one, okay. Well, I'm sure we are still cheaper than the one that you have, you know, much cheaper. Yes. Uh, so, even though it but is one. For those who, huh? I said, even though we are one, we are well connected with so many universities in the world. And mm -hmm. uh, I believe now our chancellor has been appointed on the African board for chancellors for her great work that she has done. Seychelles University, if I'm not mistaken, then it, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it would be good for uh, our representative there, those who are representing IOU, to present the credentials of IOU, its accreditation, etc., to the um, to the university and through that to your Ministry of Higher Education, so that uh, you know the equivalation of our degrees would. Uh, not be an issue. We have, we have got equivalency in Kenya and in Ghana and a number of other African countries and Asian countries. So inshallah, we hope that we'll be able to move forward with the community to help you all stand on your own. You know, even though you don't have your own university, we have what is called learning centers, you know, which uh, you, you, you can set up uh, there, a learning center where the students will actually come and study there, uh, even though they can study at home. Uh, so you have the flexibility of those who are already working. You can study at the same time while working. Uh, for those who are going to be studying full time, then it's nice to set up uh, a center, maybe connected with your masjid, your local masjid. If there are classrooms there in the local masjid, you can outfit them with computers or people there don't have problems have getting computers, you're able to bring your own computers there, but just to be studying along with other students and uh, you know interacting uh, with them, it would be good because uh, there is that socialization, that process that happens in, in uh, universities, which they would not experience you know, if they studied online uh, at all, uh, the physical interaction. Although online, we do have, we connect up our students uh, all with students from all over the world. You know, it's possible to build uh, relationships, uh, study, develop friendships, et cetera, Islamic friendships uh, on Islamic lines, you know, for 
the we call it the the Hajj experience, you know, because that's what our university is like. Students studying with us, you know, uh, get to meet students from every corner of the earth. Jazakallah khairan. Any questions? No. Or comments? Yes, yes, yes. It's been a golden opportunity to participate this morning. And like I say, the opportunities are so vast and we need to seize the opportunity and uh, just see progress from there on from, from our little uh, community. We're only a village here in Seychelles, uh, Doctor. Our population mm. of uh, Seychelles entirely is 100,000 people. And the Muslim population is hardly 3,000 people. So, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah it's a start. Yeah, it's a start. But I remember and the, one of the things I, I should the... mention, I should just add that uh, the scholarships that we're offering, um, non Muslims can also join. So, you can, uh, we've had non Muslims, for example, in, in Iswatini in South Africa, Iswatini. Uh, used to be called uh, yeah. something else before, so um, so but uh, we have uh, we have about fifty students there who are non-Muslims who are uh, studying in our scholarship program, and Alhamdulillah, you know, a number of them have already accepted Islam because they are they are being exposed to the Islamic view and Islamic approach while studying the various specializations. So this is what I'm suggesting there in. Um, in Seychelles, that uh, perhaps, you know, if you can set up a learning center and um, you want to make uh, it accessible to to the non-Muslims, you could advertise in the newspapers uh, or television or whatever, you know, of the scholarships that are available for African youth. And um, you, of course, would be responsible to vet the applicants to ensure that they really are deserving or and um, we 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 have the scholarships for them. We could you know put a yeah. put aside twenty scholarships or so for non-Muslims, and um, mm -hmm. for the Muslim community even more. Yeah, I think that is something we will have to take back, and we need to promote that because we can make Islam visible for the community. If you're making we should group, uh, group with the, our three um, uh, professionals uh, from the educational background and have a plan to make that happen. Sometimes we just look at the, it's important we start from the nursery, but what about the one who hasn't attended nursery are at that higher level? If we can uh, mm -hmm. help educate them at that level, alhamdulillah. And uh, so we can do it at both levels from the young age and uh, from year seven, uh, Grade seven onwards, inshallah. Sure, sure, definitely. Um, and uh, especially as we said, from the, the responsibility of the dawah, you know, to carry the dawah to the rest of the population, you know, to give give Muslims more of a profile in the country by showing that Muslims have something to offer. You know, we're giving something as a gift, really, to the citizens yeah. of the country. They're benefiting from it, and uh, inshallah, we will have fulfilled our responsibility. You know, of the which the Prophet ﷺ put on our shoulders when he told us, anni wa aya, convey whatever you've learned from me, even if it's only a single verse from the Quran." You know, so we all have that responsibility on our shoulders. So this is a route, a channel by which it's possible to help in uh, promoting Islam amongst the non-Muslims of the Seychelles. Absolutely. Yes, and by the way, Dr. Bilal, uh, Iswatini was previously previously called Swaziland. 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 Iswatini. Yeah, but some years ago, maybe 10 years ago or less, they changed the name to Iswatini. Yes, yes. Yeah. We have a very successful center there, run by one of the sisters, non-Muslims who joined IOU. And uh, she converted to Islam, 
And uh, alhamdulillah, she's the you know the leading figure there. Uh, and mashallah, a, a number of others have joined and accepted Islam, etc. So there's a lot of potential for promoting Islam there in Seychelles. Yeah, definitely so, through education, a very, very important route to go through education to promote Islam and uh, now that you've made all that known to me and available uh, yeah it is our responsibility to make it happen with by the will of Allah and your du'as yeah inshallah we ask Allah to give you all full success protect the community guide it and uh, inshallah keep it connected with the rest of the Muslim world Amen. Amen. Imam, over to you and the team. So, Jazakallah Khairan once again, Doctor. We will definitely be in touch. And uh, in the name of Islamic Society of Seychelles and uh, its, its subcommittees and the members and the uh, madrasa itself and all who are present, we'd like to thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you in this world and the hereafter. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that they can cling on upon the kitab and sunnah and let the education move forward in their life. So once again, Jazakallah khairan. We will be in touch definitely. It is, not, uh, the, the, it is not the end of the beginning, but it is the beginning of the end. So now we will be in touch to continue our work with the Seychelles. Jazakallah khairan wa barakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.